much. Hello, I'm Alexander Armstrong, and welcome to Pointless, the quiz show where the lowest scorers are the biggest winners. Let's meet today's players. <laughs> so, firstly, welcome to Zach and Ozzy. You're our first pair on the show. How do you two know each other? Um, we both go to university together. Uh, we initially met at a party, and since then, we've just been the best of friends. Very good indeed. Well, very best of luck this Thank afternoon. You. Welcome to Jamie and Steve. Uh, where do you come from? We're from Market Harbour, just south of Leicester, Leicester. And how do you two know each other? Jamie's my son. Very good. Best of luck this okay. afternoon. Uh, welcome to Stephanie and Trevor. How do you two know each other? Um, well, about four years ago, as I was going out with uh, one of Trevor's good friends, and when that finished, he declared an interest, and we've been seeing each other for about a year now. How did he declare an interest? <laughs> did he... Did he, did he, did he it sounds very Victorian, though, doesn't it? Did he just push an envelope on the desk <laughs> towards you? <clears throat> Perhaps you might like well, to care I, to read I, that was, I was very surprised, I have to say. I had no inkling at all that he liked me, so... Oh, well, very good. Yeah. I'm delighted to hear that. Finally, we've got Tanya and Kate. You were on the show last time. We gave everyone two chances to reach our final, and today is your last chance. Remind us how you two know each other. Uh, we, I met Tanya through a mutual friend. She gate crashed my barbecue. And oh, we've yes. been friends ever since. <laughs> OK, we'll get to know more about you all throughout the show. But before I go any further, it'd be quite wrong if I didn't introduce my friend with all the facts and figures, the man who devises the whole thing and will mastermind and supervise the whole thing. Richard, my pointless friend, how are you? <laughs> Uh, we've got a great show today. The first two questions are a nice mix of high culture and low culture. We've only got one returning pair today, that's Tanya and Kate, who got knocked out in the first round last time, so we'll be looking to do a bit better. But three new pairs. My money, I have to say, is on, uh, is on Jamie and Steve. Father and son teams always do rather well. And mm. Steve, I think, uh, used to be a bailiff. So um, yeah, yes, I, I suspect uh, you may take it by force. <laughs> <laughs> Splendid. OK, well, we've asked all our questions on Pointless to 100 people before the show. To stay in the game, all our players need to do is to score as few points as they can. And they do that by coming up with those obscure answers that as few of those 100 people gave as possible. Now, the thing everyone's looking to do is to find a pointless answer that none of our 100 people gave. Now, each time that happens, we will add £250 to the jackpot. Diane and Roger won the jackpot last time, so today's jackpot starts off at the beginning at £1,000. <laughs> OK, let's play Pointless. <laughs> In the first round, each of you must give me one answer and you cannot confer with your partner. Whichever team has the highest score at the end of the round will be eliminated. And you do have to be careful, because if anyone gives me an incorrect answer, then this will happen. And you will score the maximum of 100 points. OK, our first category today is... Pop music. <laughs> um, can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many Robbie Williams' top 40 singles as they could. Robbie Williams' top 40 singles. Richard? Yep, we're looking for any single that reached the UK top 40 for which Robbie Williams was credited as a performer. Uh, we're not accepting Take That singles or Band-Aid singles, but uh, any other collaborations will count. Right. Zach and Ozzy, you all drew lots before the show, and today you get to go first. Zach, how is your Robbie Williams knowledge? I know of him, yes. <laughs> <laughs> The name I'm going to say right now is, just keeps on popping up in my head, only because it's probably the most common thing in the chorus. You know when you can tell a song's name by the chorus? Yeah. So the answer I'm going to go for is Rock DJ. OK, you're hoping to score as few points as possible with Rock DJ. Let's see how many of our 100 people said it. Rock DJ. It's good. It's the right answer. It's a right answer. 37. Rock DJ scores you 37. That's not a terrible score. Rock DJ, Richard. Uh, yeah, a very popular song. Reached number one in the year 2001. Uh, best single at the Brit Awards the following year. Rock DJ. And I believe they banned the video. Uh, I believe they did, yeah. yeah. It was all about he was trying to get the attention of a female DJ by taking off his clothes. And then by taking off his skin and his organs until only a skeleton remained. And they banned that. <laughs> That's, that is political correctness gone mad. <laughs> Thanks very much, Richard. OK, Jamie. Jamie, are we, are we in comfortable territory for you here with Robbie Williams' singles? 
relatively, I'm, relatively. I'm of the right age. You're I the think. right age. Are you, <laughs> were you a fan of Robbie Williams at any stage? Um, some of his music, some's not to my taste. OK. We are looking for a Robbie Williams single. The more obscure, the better. There's a few spinning round in my head. I Good. I think the one I'm going to go for is called Radio. Radio. Yes. Very good. You're hoping to score as few points as possible. Steve, it's all right. What's wrong? <laughs> <laughs> it could be. It could be it a. It could right be answer. right. Yeah. It could be a brilliant answer. I have. I have a hunch. This might be a brilliant answer. Anyway, let's see. It is correct. I think it's going to go a long way down. <laughs> well done. Good answer, Jamie. That scores you one. Radio, Richard. Well, yeah, obviously a very obscure song, but also, uh, amazingly, another number one single. It was number one in, in 2004. Radio. Marvellous. Trevor, I can tell Robbie Williams' singles are, are very much your, your forte. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I did, when it came up, Robbie Williams, my heart did sink slightly. But I've, I think I've got something. He had an album out that, that didn't do very well, and he, I think it was called Rude Box. Mm -hmm. And I'm hoping there was a single from it called Rude Box. You're going to go? Hopefully, I'm going to go with that. OK, well, how many people said that? It is correct. <laughs> Good answer. Down it goes. Look at that. Oh. Nine! Thank you. <laughs> Rootbox. Yeah, Rootbox from, uh, from the album of the same name in 2006. And as you say, it was, it was regarded as slightly unsuccessful. It got to number four, but on the plus side, it won International Song of the Year at the Mexican Grammys. <laughs> <laughs> never, never write that guy off. Yeah, at your peril. OK, and finally, we come to Kate. We are looking for Robbie Williams' top 40 singles. My mind has just gone completely blank, and the only thing that comes to mind is... I hope I'm old before I die. Let's see if it is a correct answer, and if it is, let's see how many of our 100 people said it. I hope I'm old before I die. It's right. Ooh, I think that's a good answer, OK? Look at that, four. Yay. <laughs> Very good, that scores you four points. I hope I'm old before I die. Me too. Uh, it released uh, number two. It was his first ever original solo single and was released uh, over 13 years ago. So his, his wish is gradually coming true. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you very much. Richard, well, we're halfway through the round, so let's have a look at the scoreboard and see how everyone's doing. Uh, Jamie and Steve, oh, well done, well done, radio. Steve, you yeah. little thing. <laughs> um, a fantastic answer. You're looking lovely and low there. Keep that up and you'll definitely be through to the next round. Zach and Ozzy. Ozzy, the pressure's on you. You're going to have to come... <laughs> oh, dear, it doesn't sound very confident. You're going to have to find some very, very low-scoring Robbie Williams single on the next part. OK, we're going to come back down the line now. Can the second players please take their places at the podium? Tanya, we are looking for Robbie Williams' top 40 singles. It's probably no man not going to be the top answer, but I'm going to have to say the only one that I can remember that hasn't been said already, which is Angels. Angels. Kate, I've, I've seen happier faces than that one. <laughs> um, yeah. You are currently the second lowest scorers. Uh, Ozzy and Zach way ahead on 37. You want to be scoring 32 or less. There's your red line. Come below that red line and you are through to the next round. OK, you're hoping this is a nice, obscure Robbie Williams single. Um, let's see how many of our 100 people said angels. Oh, dear, oh, dear, Tanya. Angels scores you 68, taking your total up to 72. Angels, Richard. Yeah, Tanya, you scored 68 points last time with Rain Man, exactly the same thing. I like the number 68. <laughs> well, I'm not sure Kate does. <laughs> uh, yeah, Angels, well, we talked, about, uh, we talked about radio being, of course, the number one single. Angels never was. Uh, Angels peaked at number four. And here's a fact for you, the biggest selling single in history to peak at number four. OK, Stephanie. We are looking for Robbie Williams' top 40 singles. Our current high scorers are Tanya and Kate on 72. You're on nine. You're looking to score 62 or less with this answer. 
What are you, you going to say? Do you um, have any idea? Are you, are you, a, are you a... I'm, I'm not a Robbie Williams fan no. at all. Right. Um, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to go with something that's quite well known, I'm afraid. And I'm going to go with Millennium. Millennium. OK, well, you want to be scoring 62 or less with Millennium. Tanya and Kate sharing a look there that says, "Oh, we might be all right. <laughs> <laughs> There's your red line. Come below that red line and you are through to the next round. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Millennium. Yes. Oh, it's good enough. Yes. Surprisingly low. Oh, wow. A good answer, Stephanie. Yeah. Millennium scores you 27, taking your total up to 36. Millennium, Richard. Uh, yeah, it was a number one released in 1998 uh, with a lot of the John Barry, uh, James Bond music underneath it. Steve. Now then, you've got to try and equal Jamie's low score on the first pass. That's a tall order. Well, it is a bit. <laughs> he did a duet, didn't he? With a lady. Yes. And I can't remember <laughs> the name of it. Um, I'm going to go with Strangers in the Night. Jamie's face, I can tell you now, is a good deal more charitable than the face you pulled when he said radio. <laughs> but there we are. You need to score... 70 or less to avoid becoming the high scorers. Tanya and Kate, the high scorers at the moment on 72. There's your red line. Below that red line, you're through to the next round above it or incorrect. And you may well be leaving us at the end of this round. Uh, strangers in the night. Let's see what that scored you. Yeah. <laughs> Oh dear, I'm afraid that has scored you the maximum of 100 points, taking your score up to 101. Richard? No, I'm afraid that unless he did it this morning, he's, he's never recorded Strangers in the Night. And finally, Ozzy. Hi. We're looking for Robbie Williams' top 40 singles. The high scorers, just to put you in context to the people behind you, Steve and Jamie on 101. If you can score 63 or less with your answer, you're through to the next round. I was thinking of the Robbie and I think it was Nicole Kidman song. Oh, Steve's nodding. That's the one I meant. That's the but, one I meant. Fortunately, there's no melody, chorus, anything <laughs> coming to mind. Mm. But I can take an intelligent guess too, so I'm going to have to just go for an out there answer and just a random word that sounds like it could be a song, hopefully. <laughs> well, this, this is music to Steve and Jamie's yeah. ears. So I'm going to go with a word like forever. Forever? Yeah. Forever. I tell you what, if it isn't a Robbie Williams song, it, sh it blooming should be. <laughs> Let's see. Oh dear, oh dear, Steve and Jamie. Oh, <laughs> fantastic news for you. Terrible news, I'm afraid. That is an incorrect answer and scores you the maximum of 100 points. That takes your score up to 137. So that's the end of round one, and the losing pair with the highest score, I'm sorry to say, is Zach and Ozzy. Bad luck, bad luck. You yeah. Robbie Williams. It was just, it wasn't your, <sighs> no, wasn't no, your home no. ground, that was it? Not no. at all. No, at all. Well, thanks very much, guys. Uh, Richard, what answers should they have given? Well, there were five pointless answers. Well done if you've got any of these at home. Let's take a look at them. Something Beautiful, uh, South of the Border, which is one of his very early singles. It was just before Angels. She's Madonna was a, a pointless answer. He recorded that with uh, the Pet Shop Boys. Uh, Sin Sin Sin, his first single not to make the top 20. And Tripping, which was originally uh, going to be called Forever. But he changed the title <laughs> right literally at the last second. He changed it. <laughs> That's not bad luck. Uh, let's take a look at the worst answers you could have given. All three of these will be familiar to anyone paying attention for the last five minutes. Uh, Stephanie, you gave us the third worst answer we could have, Millennium. Uh, the second worst, Zach, you gave us, it's Rock DJ. And Tanya, once again, you gave us the worst answer, but the worst correct answer is always better than a wrong answer, which is why you're still in. Uh, but the worst answer was Angels, the most popular song, 68 points. Well, thanks very much, Richard. OK, Zach and Ozzy, I'm afraid you just didn't have the pointless Robbie Williams knowledge you needed to make it through. But remember, everyone gets two chances to reach our pointless final, so we'll see you again next time for your final chance. Thanks so much for playing Pointless. Thank you. <laughs> but for the remaining three pairs, it's now time for round two. <laughs> now, only... Two pairs, obviously, make it through to our head-to-head -head round, so one of the teams is going to be leaving at the end of this round disappointed. You just have to make sure it's not you. Right, our category for the second round is... 
famous women. <laughs> Can you decide in all your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many dames of the British Empire as they could. Richard. Yeah, the correct answers here are all uh, women who've been awarded the DBE, uh, making them dames. Excellent. OK, in round two, we're going to give you a choice of seven possible answers in each pass. Now, I can tell you that at least one of those answers is pointless, but I must also tell you that at least one of those answers is incorrect. So you have to do what you can to avoid those answers, or you'll score the maximum of 100 points. OK, here is your first set of seven answers. Diana Rigg, Shirley Bassey, Rebecca Adlington, Judy Dench, Ellen MacArthur, Vivian Westwood, Helen Mirren. Hmm. What do you think of that lot, Jamie? Uh, there's a few of them are ringing some bells. I tell you, that'd be a hell of a Miss Marple episode, wouldn't it? All that <laughs> cast. <laughs> wow. I think I will go for Shirley Bassey, because I'm almost sure she has. OK, we're looking for a really low score here. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Shirley Bassey. It's correct. Oh, it could be another good one, Jamie. <laughs> Very good. That scores you 20. Shirley Bassey, Richard. Yeah, Shirley Bassey received her damehood in 2000 for her contribution to entertainment. Stephanie, I just want yeah. to remind you there's at least one pointless answer in there that will add 250 quid to the jackpot. Well, I'm going to go for... Uh, somebody that I actually quite admire and quite like her work, so it's Vivian Westwood. You're going to go for Vivian Westwood? You say actually before that. <laughs> <laughs> what, the rest of them? You think are rubbish? <laughs> <laughs> um, Vivian Westwood. Let's see what that gets you. Correct. Oh, it's another good low no score. Fabulous score. Vivian Westwood, all the more reason to admire her now. She's just <laughs> scored you only one. Yeah, uh, great answer. She received her damehood in 2006 and famously picked it up wearing silver horns. And no knickers. And no <laughs> knickers. Whereas you should pick it up wearing knickers and no silver horns. That's what the invite said. <laughs> <laughs> OK, now remember, Tanya, they've helped you out here. They've taken two off the board. You only have five to choose from. We are looking for dames of the British Empire. Right. Your process of elimination. Well, I'm going to try not to get 68 points this time. So the one that I definitely know is a dame, I think, is the top answer. Right. And we all know I like the top answer, so I'm going to try and go for a different one. Um, okay. I also am sure on one that's definitely not. So I think I'm going to go with Ellen MacArthur. OK, which one do you think is definitely not? Rebecca Adlington. I think she's a swimmer, isn't she? <laughs> you can be a swimmer and a dame, I'm sure. <laughs> but she, no, but she's only just uh, won something in the Olympics, isn't she? Hasn't she? So I don't think she's a dame just yet. Okay. So fingers crossed. Fingers tightly Not crossed. 68. Ellen MacArthur. Let's see if you can keep the 68 up. It'd be brilliant. <laughs> I'd be so impressed if you did. Let's see. Oh, you've broken the jinx. Down it goes. A good answer. Look at that. Four. Well played, Tanya. Ellen MacArthur scores you four. Richard Ellen MacArthur. Uh, yeah, that's a great answer. She received her damehood in 2005 for sailing solo around the world, although we do only have her word for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's take a look at uh, the other answers, because there, uh, there is a pointless hiding there, and there is also an incorrect answer hiding there. Uh, Judy Dench would have scored the highest points of all. Dame Judy would have been 57. Helen Mirren would have, uh, is also a correct answer, would have scored you 26. Uh, you're quite right, Tanya. Rebecca Adlington was the wrong answer. She is simply an OBE. Uh, which means that Diana Rigg, Dame Diana, was the pointless answer. It would have added £250 to the jackpot. And well done at home if, uh, if you picked her out. Thanks very much, Richard. Um, well, we're halfway through the round, so let's have a look at the scoreboard. Oh, Stephanie and Trevor. Oh, that was brilliant. Very good answer there with Vivian Westwood. Fabulous. Jamie and Steve, it wasn't a bad answer. Shirley Bassey, Jamie. 
Um, but you are, I'm afraid, you're way ahead by 16 points. So, uh, Steve, on the next pass, you're going to have to score as low as you can. Otherwise, we'll be saying goodbye to you at the end of this round. Right, we're going to come back down the line. Can the second players please take their places at the podium? OK, we are looking for Dames of the British Empire, Kate. And we're going to put another seven names up on the board. Here's your next seven. Vera Lynn, Elizabeth Taylor, Shirley Crabtree, Joan Plowright, Kelly Holmes, Barbara Windsor, Julie Andrews. If it had been famous women through history, then it would have been really good, but... Mm. Yes. If it had been members of Kate's family, maybe yes. that would have been another. That would have been great, would have been so their hearts still yeah. struggle there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm going to go with Kelly Holmes. Do you know who Kelly Holmes is? No. <laughs> she just appeals to she me. She appeals to you. Your target is 15 or under. The high score is the member, Steve and Jamie. There's your red line. Below that red line, you're safe. Let's see if it's a correct answer, and if it is, how many of our 100 people said Kelly Holmes? It's correct. Oh, it's very correct. Oh. <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> Kelly Holmes scores you 21, taking your, your total up to 25. Kelly Holmes, Richard. Yeah, Kelly, she received her damehood in 2005 after winning two gold medals at the, uh, the 2004 Olympics. She's a, a middle-distance runner. <laughs> OK, we are looking for Dames of the British Empire. Trevor and Stephanie. Trevor, there's at least one pointless answer in there and at least one incorrect one, obviously. Try and avoid that. I'm going to go for the actress, cos they're always good for, for getting dame hoods, or whatever they're called. So I shall go it's for Joan Plowright. Okay. You're going to go for Plowright. Let's see how many people said that. That's correct. It's good enough. Look at that. <laughs> yeah, that's a pointless answer, and it adds £250 to today's jackpot, taking the total up to £1,250. <laughs> Joan Plowright. Yeah, very, very good answer. Uh, one of the grand dames, literally, of British theatre, but didn't get her damehood till 2004. So, remember, there could easily be another pointless answer in there, and there is most definitely at least one incorrect answer. So look out for that. Right, Steve. Steve. The high scorers are 25, Tanya and Kate. You are only a little bit behind them on 20. Mm. This has to be a very low scorer for you. Right. So I... I am going to go with Julie Andrews. You're going to go with Julie Andrews? Yes. You a fan of Julie Andrews, Steve? Not particularly, no. He says quickly. <laughs> <laughs> OK, there's your red line. I don't know, can you see it? It's just yeah. right down <laughs> Right there. at the bottom. OK, <laughs> so, yeah, if you can limbo under that, then uh, you're through to the next round. Maybe Julie Andrews will do it for you. Let's see. Go on. Go on. Get it. Low. It's be low. It's be low. Oh! <laughs> Look at that! That scores you five, which brings your total up to 25, which means we do have a tie. This is very exciting. <laughs> Julie Andrews, Richard. Yeah, uh, Julie Andrews. She won an Oscar for Mary Poppins in 1965 and uh, became a dame in the year 2000. Um, well, as it's a tie, the tied pairs have to give me another answer each from the four remaining answers. OK, you can now confer, and you are looking to choose the lowest scoring answer to stay in the game. So, Tanya and Kate, it's your turn to go first. Be warned, there is at least one incorrect answer there, and there may well be another pointless. Do you want to do that? <laughs> you've, you've reached an answer. Are we just giving the one answer between yep, us? Yeah, just one. OK, we're going to go for Shirley Crabtree. Shirley Crabtree. OK, before we put that to the tower, see what the 100 people said, I'm going to ask Steve and Jamie what their selection is going to be. Steve, Jamie. We are very confident. You're very confident? Very confident. I like the sound of that. That it's Dame Vera Lynn. OK, let's put Tanya and Kate's answer to our 100 people first. How many of our 100 people said Shirley Crabtree? Ah! 
Unfortunately, Shirley Crabtree is an incorrect answer. You score the maximum of 100 points. OK, Steve and Jamie, you said Vera Lynn. Yep. Let's see how many people said that. It's correct, which is all it needed to be. 41. <sighs> wow. What a round, Richard. Yeah, that's, uh, that's very bad luck, uh, Tanya and Kate. Shirley Crabtree is uh, it's the real name of the wrestler Big Daddy. <laughs> and uh, no, no one dared give him a damehood. <laughs> <laughs> so, Kate and Tanya, if you'd said Elizabeth Taylor, you would have got through to the head-to-head -head final because she would have scored you one point. She was made a dame in 2000. And the only other name on uh, the board, Barbara Windsor, scandalously only has an MBE, uh, would have scored 100 points. Thanks, Richard. So, at the end of round two, the losing pair with the highest score, I'm afraid, is Tanya and Kate. Bad luck. You didn't have um, areas that you particularly knew, did you? Well, we knew Elizabeth Taylor was definitely a correct answer, but we thought she'd be, you quite know, high. quite high. Oh, well. Well, uh, you've been fantastic contestants. Uh, sadly, I'm afraid you just didn't have that pointless knowledge you needed to get through to the head-to-head. -head. But thank you for playing pointless. You've been great. Thank you. <laughs> so, for the remaining two pairs, things are about to get even more exciting now as we enter the head-to-head. -head. Now, obviously, only one pair can make it through to today's final and play for the jackpot, which, in case you'd forgotten, currently stands at £1,250. <laughs> OK, you're going to go head-to-head -head on up to five questions. For each question, each pair needs to give me just one answer, and you are now allowed to confer. That's the good news. All you have to do is come up with an answer that scores less than the other pair to win that question. And the first pair to win three will be playing for today's jackpot. Clear? Good. Let's play Pointless. <laughs> OK, here's your first question. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many countries beginning with P as they could. Countries beginning with P. Richard? Uh, yeah, we're looking for any of the nine countries of the world that uh, begin with the letter P. By country, as always, we mean a sovereign state that's a member of the UN. Uh, while they're conferring, see if you can get all nine. I think it's, uh, it's quite tricky, I think. Yeah, it's quite tricky. Uh, Stephanie and Trevor, because you played the best throughout the show so far, you get to go first. OK, have you come up with an answer? We yeah. have. Looking um... quite confident there. <laughs> <laughs> well, we know it's a country, but it's just what it scores. We're going to go with Paraguay. 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 Steve, does that face mean, oh, we had that? No, I had that, but I, was, I wasn't... You had it? But, Tossed uh, it away. No, toss it away. <laughs> so, we're looking for more. South America, we've got Panama. Yeah, Panama. Portugal. Portugal. Poland. Poland. Papua New Guinea. No, mm, Papua New Guinea. No, I'll tell you what. Beginning with an F. Philippines. Yeah. Yeah? Definitely. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I like beginning with an F. I was thinking, he's gone. Richard, he's gone mad. <laughs> <He's gone back. laughs> What's he doing? Beginning with an F? We're going to go for Philippines. Philippines. I like your logic there. OK. Stephanie and Trevor in gold. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Paraguay. <laughs> 36. <laughs> That's not a one, is, <laughs> is, that, is that the kind of score you were hoping for? No. Well... You're having a no. bit lower, please. <laughs> That's a bit higher we were than you were hoping. Lower. OK, let's see how many of our 100 people said the Philippines. Is it going to be lower? It is! <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, after the first question, it's 1-0 to Jamie and Steve. Richard? Uh, yeah, Philippines is a very, very good answer. There's only, uh, there's only one country that could have beaten it, and that's a tiny island nation called Palau. Palau, which would have scored you three points. Let's take a look at uh, all nine of them. There we go, there's Palau. Uh, Philippines, made up of over 7,000 islands, but very good answer. Papua New Guinea would have been, uh, would have been a correct answer. Uh, Panama, Pakistan would have scored you 34. There are four more. There's Paraguay, uh, then Peru, Poland in second. I like Poland, because it's, it's just about the only country in... Uh, Eastern Europe that existed when we were at school. <laughs> uh, and top of the list, uh, Portugal, which would have scored 83 points. OK, thanks very much, Richard. So the scores are 1-0 to Jamie and Steve.
Come on, Stephanie and Trevor, here's your second question. See if you can win this one. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many Nick Hornby novels as they could. Richard, Nick Hornby novels. Yeah, we're looking for any of the seven complete novels written by Nick Hornby. We will accept those where he's listed as co-author. Uh, a word of warning, Fever Pitch is not a novel. It's a memoir, so we won't accept Fever Pitch. OK, this time it is Jamie and Steve's turn to go I, first. I, I haven't got a clue. I've heard of it. I've, I've heard of it. Hmm? When Saturday comes. <laughs> when Saturday comes. Oh, no, it's, uh, it's a novel, I don't a, even know who wrote method, it. <laughs> there's method to it. When Saturday comes, is what you're saying. Stephanie and Trevor, Nick Hornby novel. OK. <clears throat> I don't know why I've done that. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Um, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> no, there is. That's a boy. That's a boy. That's a film as well, isn't it? Yeah. About a boy. <laughs> About a boy. <laughs> Good noise from Steve. Um, OK, we're going to go with When Saturday Comes First from Jamie and Steve. No! Ooh. Bad luck, that's an incorrect answer. Let's see if Stephanie and Trevor can do any better with About a Boy. It's correct. It's all it needs to be. Wrong way down. No, that's 17. <laughs> OK, so after the second question, it is one all. Uh, yeah, that's stuff like there were seven answers. Uh, let, let's take a look at them all. Uh, there is a pointless answer there, unsurprisingly pointless. Click is, is a novel written by, by a number of different authors for which Nick Hornby wrote a chapter. Uh, Juliet Naked is his uh, most recent novel. Slam was a, a novel for, for teenagers. A long way down, uh, about four people all uh, contemplating suicide. Um, <laughs> How to be good. And then uh, High Fidelity was the one you were thinking about set in the record shop, which was also a, a movie. And uh, it's the worst answer of all in one way about a boy, but uh, it's a great answer compared to uh, When Saturday Comes, which is it's not a novel at all. It's a, it's a film with Sean Bean and obviously a, a football magazine, yeah. but uh, it's not a book. No. OK, thanks, Richard. Right, here's your third question. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many members of the goons as they could. Members of the goons, Richard. Yeah, quite simply, uh, any of the original members of the comedy radio troupe, The Goons. Right. This time it is Stephanie and Trevor to go first again. Michael Benton. Go on. Okay. OK. After a lot of consideration, <laughs> mm -hmm. we're going for Michael Benton. Oh, Steve, that's one you had, was it? Yep. Yeah. I suspect that's a very good answer. Michael Benton. Steve, what are you going to say? Um, well... I don't think we're going to beat Michael Benteen. <laughs> we're going to go for Harry Seacombe. OK, Harry Seacombe. OK, let's see. Stephanie and Trevor, you have said Michael Benteen. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Michael Benteen. Down goes 39. <laughs> Surprisingly high score, yeah, that yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, Higher than I thought. Yeah. yeah exactly. A bit more confident now? No. No. Everybody okay. knows Seacombe. Well... Let's see if everybody knows Seekham. Uh, let's put Seekham to the test. How many of our 100 people said him? Uh, uh, yeah, OK, no, you're right. Pretty much everyone does know Harry Seekham. So after our third question, it is 2-1 to Stephanie and Trevor. You only have to win one more point to be through to our final. So Jamie and Steve, you've got to really try hard to win this next question. Richard. Yeah, the goons, Michael Benteen was the, uh, was the killer answer. There's nothing you could have done about that. Let's take a look at all four. Michael Benteen propping up the list. Uh, Peter Sellers was uh, the one you can't remember. It's uh, an obvious one, but uh, obviously other people had that problem. Spike Milligan and right at the top, Harry Seacombe, 73. OK, thanks, Richard. Here is your fourth question, Stephanie and Trevor. You win this one, you are through to the final. Jamie and Steve, concentrate. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many Baz Luhrmann films as they could. Baz Luhrmann films. Trevor looks terrified. <laughs> Richard, Baz Luhrmann films. Yeah, looking for any uh, feature film made for cinema release for which Baz Luhrmann was director. He has directed four films. OK, well, Jamie and Steve, it's your turn to answer first. I, I, I really don't know. 
Twilight. Twilight, you're saying? Stephanie and Trevor? He did uh, Moulin Rouge, didn't he? But I think everybody mm. would know that, wouldn't they? And the more care. recent one, yeah. those Australia. Baz Luhrmann. Would remember, people Baz, remember that? That's Baz Luhrmann. I'm sure that is. Brilliant. I'm, I'm sure genius. It is. I'll go with that. Genius. <laughs> Absolute genius. Says Trevor. I've um, never heard of that. Okay, one. we have Twilight from Jamie and Steve and Australia from Stephanie and Trevor. Let's put them to the test. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Twilight and if it is a correct answer. This has to be a correct answer and indeed a winning answer if you're not going to be leaving the show now. <laughs> Bad luck, I'm afraid that's an incorrect answer. So Stephanie and Trevor have said Australia. Let's see if that is a correct answer, which is all it has to be. It's right. That scores you at 16. That's good enough. That means after the fourth question, Stephanie and Trevor have won 3 1. Richard, Baz yeah. Luhrmann. That's tough luck, Jamie and Steve. That's the wrong question coming up at the wrong time. Uh, you made four films. There's only one film could have beaten Australia, uh, and that was Baz Luhrmann's first film, which was Strictly Ballroom. Uh, Australia, 16 points. Uh, his reimagining of Romeo and Juliet, uh, 23. And as you say, Moulin Rouge was a, another one of his. Well done if you got all four. Thanks very much, Richard. So, the losing pair at the end of the head-to-head -head round, I'm afraid, is Jamie and Steve. Bad luck, bad luck, as Richard said. That was... Uh, one question at the wrong time. That's exactly right, yeah. Yeah, what subjects would you have loved to come up? I'm guessing... Sport. 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 <laughs> Geog Geog geography. Geography. History. 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 But you, you seem... I mean, you know, you seem to complement each other pretty well, yeah, you know. Yeah, we well, better luck next time. Everyone gets two shots okay. at the pointless final, so we will see you next time for your final chance. But thanks so much for playing. Thank you. <laughs> But for Stephanie and Trevor, it's time for our pointless final. <laughs> Congratulations, Stephanie and Trevor. You've fought up all the competition and you've won our coveted pointless trophy. Now you've got a chance to win our pointless jackpot. At the end of today's show, the jackpot, in case you'd forgotten, stands at an impressive £1,250. <laughs> OK, the rules are very simple. To win the money, all you have to do is find a pointless answer. That's an answer that no one could think of. We've had one pointless answer on the show today. Trevor, you gave us that answer, so let's hope you can find one more now when it counts. OK, first you've got to choose a category, and these are your three options. You can go for... Goal scorers, 90s boy bands, or the shipping forecast? Well, Trevor, I think it's, it's a no-brainer. I'm guessing, yeah, it's 90s boy bands. Good, yeah, <laughs> I thought it was. It's got to be the shipping forecast, hasn't it? Because I can't do 90s boy bands. Goal, goal scorers, scorers is, is too, it's too big, really, isn't yeah. it? I, yeah, it's got to be the shipping, shipping forecast. Shipping forecast it is. OK, you're going to go for shipping forecast. <laughs> So we gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many areas of the shipping forecast as they could. Richard? Yeah, I could hear thousands of people at home saying, please go for shipping forecast, not, not 90s boy bands. So, so you've made them very happy. We're looking for uh, any of the names mentioned on the shipping forecast, which, of course, is issued by the Met Office uh, on behalf of the Maritime and Coast Guard Agency. Uh, it's the shipping forecast, of course, that you regularly hear on Radio 4. There are 31 shipping areas. OK, you now have up to one minute to come up with three answers, and all you need to win that £1,250 is for just one of those answers to be pointless. OK, your 60 seconds start now. Right, I don't think we need to start at the top, do okay, we? OK, I don't know, because the only one I know is Dogger, that's OK, it. we'll have that one. No, we won't do that one. There's uh, North Westera, South Westera. OK. Uh, Cromptie's full-time Dogger. German <laughs> Oh, it's good, isn't it? Thames. Wow. Um, but I think we'll have to go around the ones around the, the back there, so... OK, so that, what's the first one? Um, so if we go for North Westera. North Westera? Yeah, North Westera. Yeah. Then maybe... Um, Fastnet? Mm, I've heard of that. OK, we won't go for that one, then. <laughs> Trafalgar? OK. Then you're going right back round again. Well, maybe so. do Fastnet if you know for sure that's... Well, you, know you, for see, sure. you certainly won. Yeah. Uh, We've only got ten seconds left. It's Biscay, Trafalgar, 
Um, German bites. Oh, in terms of they're quite famous ones, aren't they? And there's your minute. OK. okay. Nominate three. Start with nor North Wisteria. OK. Trafalgar. Trafalgar. And what's the third one we're going for? Fastnet. 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 Which of those is the strongest, do you think? The only one I've heard of is Fastnet, so it's got to be. So that's the, that's, you think that's your strongest, the one yeah. you have most faith in? Yeah. OK, we'll put that one third. Um, which one do you have the least faith in? Trafalgar, I think. So we'll go for Trafalgar first. Yes. North at Syrah, Syrah. second, and... Fastnet. Fastnet, third. OK, well, you have three shots at the jackpot. One of these has to be pointless for you to win that jackpot. What would you do with 1,250 quid? I think it would be a bit of a holiday, probably, yeah, wouldn't it? Yeah, holiday would be nice, wouldn't it? Yeah, a yeah. bit of a holiday. Yeah. Very nice. Where would you go? Northwest Sarah. <laughs> oh, Northwest Sarah. It is lovely. A bit wet, but um, they've got some great fish there, certainly. OK, we were looking for areas of the shipping forecast, and you have given Trafalgar as your first of your three answers. You only need to find one pointless answer to win that £1,250. This has to be a pointless answer. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Trafalgar. Trafalgar. This, as I say, has to be a pointless answer for you to win that £1,250. <laughs> that means no one of our 100 people can have said it. Look at that! It's a pointless answer! Oh. Very good. Well done. Oh, thank you. Thank well. you. Brilliant. Brilliant. Thank Brilliant. you. Brilliant. <laughs> Oh, well, congratulations. You managed to find that all-important pointless answer, which means you go home with a jackpot of £1,250. Well done. Yeah. <laughs> and that was the one you had least faith in. Yeah. Brilliant. So, North at Syrah, here it is. Absolutely. Get yourself yeah, there wait. immediately. Yeah, book a, book a, a trawler now. <laughs> Straight out there. <laughs> uh, that was a great answer, and congratulations, you've been brilliant throughout the show. Uh, there were, uh, Trafalgar actually is only uh, very rarely mentioned in the main shipping forecast. It's only mentioned in the after midnight one, which I think is uh, why it was pointless. Uh, if you'd had to rely on your other two answers, North at Syrah and Fastnet, uh, they both would have scored you four points. So Trafalgar was the one. I'm just wondering if there's any crossover from 90s boy bands to uh, shipping forecasts. Let me have a little Fastnet, look. Fastnet, I'm sure there's a band called Fastnet. Yeah. <laughs> the that Pharaohs, was... yeah. who could forget them? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Thanks once again to our winning players, Stephanie and Trevor, who go away with today's jackpot of £1,250. Well done. Yeah. <laughs> Join us next time when we put more obscure knowledge to the test on Pointless. Meanwhile, it's goodbye from Richard. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>